In this episode of the Iron Empire, we begin the budget rebuild on this 318 Chrysler that I all but exploded. Here we are guys, we are once again in the shed and I've got to get this whole workspace ready to go because today we are going to start preparing this small block Chrysler for repairs. Basically the crank is knackered and we're going to unknacker it. But I have not been working in this shed since we've done the patina job on the fair lane a couple weeks ago and oh man it is looking as rough as my head this morning. So. What I'm gonna do is right now, I'm gonna move this fair lane out, which is of course waiting some work as well. I've got the dash out of the freaking thing. There's so much shit on the go. But first things first, this is gonna come out. Um, I've got Matt coming over once again. Uh, you've seen him on an earlier episode. We had him doing a little bit of work on this. We also done a bit on the Bronco. I'm super excited to have him back. He's a big time engine guy. And then we'll start measuring parts and um, hopefully doing a little bit of assembly. <sighs> Let's get into it. All right, so we are now ready to go with the 318. As you can see, this place is much cleaner. I've done a big tidy up. I've done a mop. I've done a broom. I've done all that stuff. And I have finally got the 318 in place ready to clean this up. So I'm going to start by popping this head off, um, placing all the goodies down here. And then I've got to clean this up so we can start measuring so we can sort of assemble and everything. Um, I do have to run off and get a hone. I got one yesterday, but it's a stone hone and I want to run a ball hone on this because there's a bit of ridge here. So I think the ball hone will get a little bit of a more forgiving job, we'll, we'll say. So I'm going to start stripping this down and see how far we can get today. Okay, so we've had a few issues today. Uh, I wasn't prepared um, by the time we stripped this motor down. I also forgot about the cam bearings. I totally destroyed. I haven't got new cam bearings. Um, so basically, I am now getting this engine loaded up. We're going to race down to Harman Engine Reconditioning, and we're going to. I might clean it up, obviously, <laughs> beforehand, um, and then knock some cam bearings in. I've managed to find some locally. Um, uh, Chris from Harman's found them for me and has sourced them and put them on his account. Absolute legend. Once again, saving my ass. So I'm gonna race down to Wingfield, pick those up and go back to Harman's and um, get those installed hopefully tonight. Luckily, they'll stay back after hours. Let's see if we can get this all wrapped up and to a point where we can move forward today. Okay, so after bringing my junk down to Chris's workshop, once again, this time on absolute short notice, uh, we dumped the block in the washdown bay where I got absolutely hosed with greasy water, but we got the thing clean. 
Now, next step is to de-ridge these bores. Now, this is a method you can use when you've got a bit of a lip here, and um, basically, you do run a bit of a risk when you're putting new pistons or when you're putting new rings in some bores that haven't been basically bored out to another size. So this is a de-ridger, I think it's called, and you'll see here, uh, basically, you just put it in the bore and you tighten up that center nut until you get more tension. And as you add tension, keep turning, it'll slowly de-ridge that top lip and get it to a bore size where we can run the, the factory pistons with new rings without any damage. Chris showed me how to get it done in the workshop here. So then I continue when I got home and done all cylinders. It came out really good. Okay, so now is where the plot thickens. The engine was initially gonna be kept with the original camshaft and lifters to try and keep this thing lo low buck. But unfortunately, the cam bearings were totally knackered. So I had no choice but to pull the camshaft, replace the bearings, and that's why we're here. Like, see what I mean by like even the texture line as dodgy as it sounds, you can see no, where the hole dodgy. is and where the bearing is. I'm scared. Can I take a fair bit of a whack then? Yeah, they're going tight. Yeah, that's a little bit too soft for that. Chris is showing me how to do this once again. I've done this only once before when the, when we done the Doom Sled flathead six cylinder. Um, Chris showed me his methods in making sure all the oil holes line up by marking the block with a texter. Um, taking your time, once these cam bearings go in, they can go in once and once only. You have one chance. If you have to push these things out again, you need new bearings. So I've done exactly what I was told, took my time, and we got the spot on result that we we're after. And you can look down the oil hole, uh, yeah. down the feed hole to see how good it's lined up. Oh yeah, it's actually pretty good. It's pretty good. Yeah. One and done. Okay, so here we are the next day. I don't know if this video even makes sense at this point, but basically uh, last night after a full mad scramble, we got this thing down to Harmon's. Uh, Chris helped me out massively. He pretty much dropped everything to help me get this freaking block sorted. And now we are at a point where I can move ahead. I've gotten to about noon today to get the uh, top ridge of these bores de-ridged. Um, give it a clean up with the hone, with the dingle ball hone, and then run it over to Matt, who was obviously here yesterday helping me, but because everything went to shit, um, we bailed out on that idea. He shot home and uh, got on with some stuff he's got to do. But he's uh, flying fly out, but he's got another week up his sleeve here in Adelaide. But unfortunately, I don't have a week up my sleeve. From tomorrow onwards, I'm absolutely pumped with shit at the shack that I need to do. So I'm gonna get this over to him and he is gonna mic everything up, check all the bearing clearances and everything like that. So we can start moving ahead with the assembly because that's the part that I need some guidance with. I wanted to do it with him so we could do it all here. But unfortunately at the moment, just moving ahead with this build is more important. So I'm gonna drop it off. He's gonna do all that. And then once I get it back, I can move on with stuff like reconning the heads and shit. So. I'm going to do a little bit more time lapse because I'm running super short on memory space in my phone. Um, let's see how we go.
Now, after spending about 20 minutes on the first couple of cylinders, maybe even longer, really just getting the method down pat on how to de-ridge these bores, I went ahead and done some honing to see how it came up. Now, as you'll see, I've got a really nice cross hatch on those first couple of bores, and I got pretty much 95% of that ridge out. Once I had the method down pat, the rest of the block was piss easy. I probably only spent a few minutes per bore and honed as I went, and I'm super happy with the result I got, especially for the first time ever giving this a crack. Now, after de-ridging all eight cylinders, it was time to give it one last clean off, getting rid of any metal shavings before going to town with the dingle ball home. All right, here it is guys, finally wrapped up, ready to go. I have cleaned this thing as good as I can with the time I have, only a couple of hours, but I've cleaned it, I've de-ridged it, and I have honed it. I'm really actually super happy with how this thing come out. Um, the de-ridging, obviously, it's very hard to get it perfect because the ridge isn't exactly uniform the whole way around, so you have to find that happy balance between getting most of the ridge out uh, on the higher side and then not going too far on the lower side of the ridge. So I feel like I've found a happy medium. Um, to be honest with you, I've probably got at least sort of 85% of the ridge out everywhere and whatever ridge is left is so minuscule. By the time I ran a hone through this, which I was surprised how quickly it honed up, I've never honed anything before. Um, obviously everyone has a different method. I just use some WD-40 and uh, these bores come up really nice. There is a few little scores here and there that you can feel, but honestly, this motor never uh, blew any smoke or anything prior. Um, so with a good cleanup, a fresh hone, new uh, new rings, um, this thing's gonna seal up better than it than it has since we've owned it anyway. So um, yeah, look, overall, I'm super stoked with the result I've got. Once again, as a super quickie, I would have loved to have spent more time on this, but I gotta get this thing out the door because I'm running out of time today. Um, the pistons all come up really nice. Obviously we are reusing these pistons. When Chris actually measured these pistons up to order the piston rings, um, these are factory pistons. So we're talking 1971. Um, and they, are, they only had one thou worn out of them which is awesome. So um, now the bores obviously have a bit more than that because they did have a little bit of a ridge. Um, but once again, I've tried to save it without taking, basically by taking the least amount of material out of this, we've got it, we're gonna have this thing back on the road and running. So it's gonna have probably a little bit more clearance than we would like in a perfect scenario, but this is gonna run and I can't wait for it. Drop it in that car there and it's gonna be awesome once again. So I'm gonna get this loaded up and then uh, hit the road. Let's see what Matt can come up with. Hopefully he's not too fussy. Now, by the looks of it, Matt didn't want to be a movie star, so all we have to go by is a few happy snaps he took of the bottom end rebuild as he assembled the motor. Nice clean workspace, super fussy, and from what I've got told, everything mic'd up pretty good. All right, guys, so here we are one week later and I have the engine back. This is now a rotating bottom end assembly. Thank you to Matt who sorted that out for me. I had a massive weekend and a massive start of the week um, already booked in and there was no way I was going to get this sorted. I wanted to build it with Matt, but unfortunately, I had to keep moving with some of the other projects I've got on the go. And uh, fortunately, Matt was keen to take it on. So... 
we're going to unpackage this now, have a look at it all, and then I'm going to tell you what the plans are moving forward with this motor. Okay, guys, so where we are at with this thing, I've obviously got it all wrapped up. Um, Matt took good care of this thing, wrapped it up with a sandwich. And, um, yeah, we he went through all the, the tolerances and the bearing clearances and everything, and it's actually pretty good. I think all the bearing clearances were like two thou or something, which was right in the meat of the specs, the factory specs that they recommend for these things. Um, of course, this crankshaft has been reground uh, with 10 under, uh, gone 10 under size on both journals, the crank and the, and the mains. And of course I bought bearings to suit and yeah, everything basically measured up sweet. Um, he's done a mint job of this. Of course, we're going full budget, but as far as budget's concerned, this is pretty good. Reuse the factory pistons. Now, Matt reckons that there is uh, very little piston slot in the uh, in the bores, so that's pretty nice considering these are over 50-year-old pistons. Um, so, yeah, really stoked with how this has come up so far. And where am I at? So, basically, I'm going to turn this puppy over, have a look. And yeah, I don't even know what I'm talking about. Okay, now going inside here, I'm actually so stoked with how this come up. There is a few little marks in the bore that you can just feel with your nail, but each bore, I reckon we've got, maybe only a couple of bores have a little scratch, but it is nothing considering what this engine has been through and what we're talking about piston to bore clearance is how tight these pistons are in the bores and they don't rock around you cannot feel any movement at all so which means the clearance isn't too much basically it hasn't gone to a point where um basically if you get to a point where it's like you know six seven eight thou that's when you get to a point where you have to machine the block machine the block put new pistons in and of course if you were doing a full rebuild like brand new you'd be doing that every time but we're just trying to save this bad boy and uh absolute stokes that i've got this back now i'm bummed that i wasn't there to put it back together but um the good news is i can carry on with the build now because i have ordered some brand new parts from once again crow cams who um helped us out with the au build when we done andrea's five liter in that we done a nice um little mid-range sort of performance cam and that worked that five liter up a hell of a lot and once we started tearing this thing down last week matt sort of looked at the 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 cam i knew the cam bearings had to be replaced anyway so the cam was already coming out and the cam was a little bit worn and also so were the lifters so I was already going to have to spend some money or at least do some work to try and save all those parts. So bottom line is I've ended up going with a new camshaft. So we've ended up with a very mid-range cam. Um, basically, this thing is good from about 2,000 through to 5,000, I reckon, is what is advertised. And um, once again, the team at Crow Cams have been freaking awesome to deal with. Um, they're one of the few companies you can actually ring up and speak to a human being on the other side that speaks very clear English and they will explain to you um, what you need and you can sort of give them your, your combination and they'll give you a bit of feedback and all that sort of stuff. So um, yeah, cannot recommend them highly enough. And so yeah, I, that, that's on its way. So hopefully by the end of, well, by next week, I'll have a new camshaft that I can start getting in this thing and also I'll start rebuilding these heads. What? No way. It can't be. Surely not. So I ordered the camshaft yesterday at two o'clock and I'm nearly finished editing this video the next day at four o'clock. <laughs> that 
That is ridiculous. 26 hours. Literally overnight parts. Now that is service. Crow cams come through with the goods. And we got some uh, posters. Sick. You have to see this in an upcoming episode. Man, I want to put it in right now. Okay, guys, so that is going to be a wrap on this episode. Hopefully, you guys picked up a few bits of information along the way that you didn't know. Uh, I certainly learned a heap uh, already. I always do, especially every time I go down to Harman Engine Reconditioning. I learn another thing every single time. Um, I'm super bummed that I wasn't there to begin the the sort of the assembly side of things, um, but I'm also super grateful that Matt had the time in uh, in his in his week to sort of get stuck into this. And yeah, man, I can't wait to keep going. So hopefully it won't be too long, and I can continue on with the build. Like I said, the heads will be getting reconditioned. Uh, you guys will see that in an upcoming episode. We might do a little bit of home porting, which you'll see as well. Until then, please like this video, leave a comment, let us know what you reckon of the small block Chrysler. Have you guys had any experience with these things? Yeah, that's gonna be it. Don't forget to check out the online store, grab a new Doomsled t-shirt if you haven't already. Those things are selling like hotcakes. And we'll see you all on an upcoming episode. Cheers, guys.